Good morning, and uh, thank you, Ivy Cap, for inviting me here. Uh, I'm from Bangalore, so on a Saturday morning, uh, getting up very early to catch a flight to come to Bangalore, I said, why should I do it? Then I saw the list of people speaking before me. I saw PG, Pradeep Gupta, who uh, is a class act to follow. He's a role model. He's worked at HCL like me left to start a business before entrepreneurship, venture capital, or any of this uh, was even heard of. Uh, and he's also from IM Calcutta, uh, where I am from. So it's a good, ro he's a good role model and class act to follow. But still getting up at uh, 4.30 uh, in Bangalore on a Saturday morning and coming to Bombay was still a challenge. But then uh, I looked at uh, Vikram. We share the same hairstyle. I mean, as you would have noticed, okay, right? So, 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 so that was extremely compelling. How can you say no to somebody? <laughs> so, so <clears throat> that's how that's how I am. So, if I'm incoherent, it's because of 4:30 a.m. wake up on a Saturday morning. Okay, right? <laughs> so, so, that's okay, right? Uh, before I before I start, okay, right? Uh, couple of caveats. So, one is that uh, while we have done, uh, I've done four ventures, exited them, uh, now doing multiple ventures through a venture builder platform called Growth Story, uh, wherein we do parallel entrepreneurship. Uh, like all of you know, we, uh, whether you're an entrepreneur or an investor or an LP or a venture fund, the jury is out till the time the actual exit happens. So every day we face challenges with a a every of the companies trying to uh, be out there. So uh, one, uh, whatever I'm saying, okay, right, is just my own experience and the way I look at it. Not the only way to look at it, not the final word. That's caveat one. Uh, caveat two is uh, I am from IM Calcutta. So like all the people from uh, Ivy League schools, like all the people from uh, 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 management institutes, we are very good at making macros, excels, projections, and all of that stuff, okay, right? If it works out accidentally, sometimes we take full credit for it, like the way I do. If it doesn't work out, we blame everybody. We blame the weather. We blame the environment, the government, Donald Trump, or whatever, okay, right? So, so, so that's, that's what happens. So if you find something I am saying uh, to be too uh, uh, good to be true, take it with a pinch of salt, okay, right? In fact, take it with a bucket of salt. And uh, if you want to know where to buy it from, one of my companies, Big Basket, if you put IV cap day, you will get 2% discount because e-commerce runs on discount. Okay, right? So, so, so that's a special one for Vikram. Okay, right? So, 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 so. okay. Um, uh, with that, let's, which is the, okay. So uh, with that, let's start. Okay, right? So I think forget about, the past, forget about the last five years, last six years, last seven years. Let's look at where are we today, okay, right? The macros today is the best it ever was, I can think. I think the excitement that we feel in the startup, startup ecosystem as an entrepreneur, as a promoter of multiple companies, as an uh, investor, is because I don't think we have it better than what it is today, anytime, anywhere. I know there are skeptics. All of us have done mistakes. All of us have challenges. All of us have crisis. But this is the best time to be in. And why do I say that? Look at, look at just the growth. Okay. We are talking about real net growth. If you add to that the inflation, the kind of number that we are talking about is phenomenal. In eight to nine years, you'll actually have a new, new India. Why is that? Why is the excitement so high? Why am I saying that this is a unique point of time? Because we have the opportunity to leapfrog into digital era. People like Pradeep Gupta, PG, myself, who are old and have seen IT industry from early days, we know how India leapfrogged because we went away from mainframe. We came to mini computer and we leapfrogged with personal computers. We have seen that even in the telecom side, India did not have landline connection. I remember when I started my first company, IT&T, in 1990. At that time, I had to wait for two years before I could get a telephone connection. And it with the landline, it never would have been impossible to connect entire India 
Today, you know where all mobile goes. That is a leapfrog that has happened. The same thing is happening today because of internet, because of connectivity across India, that we are leapfrogging into a digital era. What it basically means is the core infrastructure, thanks to technology, is getting created with which we can do several things, build several businesses, solve several problems, and do that. I think that leapfrogging into digital era is the single biggest opportunity that all of us have, that entrepreneurs, investors, entire ecosystem can actually do that. What does it mean? We have, we have seen, thanks to Geo, thanks to privatization, thanks to a falling cost of smartphones, not just smartphones, even feature phones, wherein you can you, uh, view videos, consume content, and combine that with affordable data plans. The price of data has gone one-tenth in one year. Courtesy geo, courtesy competition. One of the cheapest data bandwidth rates in the world. If I had just told you five years back or seven years back, that India would have bandwidth across the country at the cheapest thing, it would have been impossible to imagine. That is a big, big event. I call them a black swan event, okay, right? India stack, whether it is digital payment, whether it is EKYC, whether it is Aadhaar, whether it is UPI, whether it is interface, all of that has come together in the last couple of years to be able to really be able to transact with a local remote person which in absence of all of this would not have been possible. Can you imagine collecting five rupee check from a villager on a check? The cost of collecting the check, processing the check, crediting in the account, reconciling the account would kill you. Today, micro payments, single rupee payment, it's possible to get, reconcile, and do that. Again, something that has happened in the last two years, three years would have made it impossible. Along with the fact that you can authenticate him, you've got EKYC, all of that is possible to be able to do it. The third one, WhatsApp, we all know India is the largest consumer user of WhatsApp, okay, right? Adoption of WhatsApp, adoption by people uh, who can't speak English, who are not really computer literate, who can't open a computer, who can't log into a computer, but using WhatsApp, they will consume content, they will message, that is phenomenal. Even Facebook did not think of such an adoption of WhatsApp the way they have seen it in India. Not just, not just WhatsApp, Facebook, even other things. On mobile first, mobile only. These are people we are talking about who don't have a computer, who may not be able to afford a computer, who may not be literate enough to be able to open and work on a computer, consuming, working, using WhatsApp every day. We have seen that with a local Daba owner using his phone for using Paytm for payment. We have seen an auto driver uh, with Ola using phone and a digital payment to make his living. That is unimaginable 10 years back, or even five years back. The growth of e-commerce, I'm not just talking about the $18 billion of Flipkart valuation, $20 billion of Flipkart valuation, just the sheer growth of e-commerce. 10 years back, if had said India would transact, buy online, Okay, there was a list of people. I was one of the top VCs speaking 10 years back. Uh, they are not in India. They, they did have a presence in India. They went back. They said India will never do e-commerce. Why? The trust levels are low. People don't trust each other. They want to go to be able to go to a shop. Internet penetration is low. PC penetration is low. Credit card penetration is low. Trust levels are low. Therefore, we will not do e-commerce. We have seen what's happening in e-commerce today. This is just 10 years back. Okay, right? And huge amount of investments are coming into India. IVCAP is a domestic fund. We have domestic funds. We have foreign funds. We have funds which are uh, hedge funds. People are uh, paying into India. So what we have seen now in the past is just the first wave of e-commerce. Okay, right? So the, in, a, in a Flipkart in 10 years had went from zero to 20 billion. Okay, right? We have had companies. Amazon, Big Basket, Mintra, Pepperfly, Urban Ladder, all of them bringing e-commerce into India, uh, be it vertical, be it horizontal. Okay. What is it that has driven this thing? In my opinion, it is the lack of enough organized retail across the country. Why did that happen? All the large players chose to set up in metro cities because that's where it made sense for them. They didn't want to go to tier two, tier three cities. There was hardly... I mean, they, they, it didn't make business sense for them. But the population in tier two, tier three cities is huge. Right? So that 
itself is a huge opportunity. If you take a country like US, if you take, a, if you take Europe, if you take Singapore, this problem does not exist. Okay, right? So people in those places lacked access to organized retail. The selection, pricing, availability was poor because the large players did not think, I mean, it didn't make business sense for them to go to that place. They would rather stick to Bombay, Delhi, the, the, the metros or mini metros. Okay, right? That's how in the 10 years back, the e-commerce wave that started the first wave, e-commerce boomed, okay, right? And just think a moment back, what was the situation at that point of time? Only 50 million internet users. There were no digital payments. There was no logistics. Flipkart had to set its own logistics, okay, right? I know in Bluestone, which is one of the companies we are proud to partner with, IB Cap Ventures, which is a company, growth story uh, company. Huge challenge of how are we going to get, deliver, uh, val expensive, valuable uh, gold and diamond uh, jewelry across the country. We had to really do pioneering work. Okay, right? That was the situation, and it has boomed, and you have seen $20 billion uh, value getting created. That is, that is the first wave. The second wave, we saw hyper-local became the king. Okay, right? What was the reason? Poor transportation choices. Again, people compare Ola with Uber. In US or in Europe, the transportation was not a challenge like the way it is here. There it was a convenience. There we could, people could actually drive their own car. The roads were great. There were a lot of parking. And in, in, in many of the places, public transportation was perfect. In Europe, public transportation is available in plenty. Okay, right? in, the, in many states in US, public transportation is available extremely conveniently. There was no problem there. Whereas here, in many cities, in Bangalore, where I come from, you don't have a black and yellow taxi. Before Ola Uber came, either you have to drive, then you're worried about parking, or you need to have a car, or you need to be, or you will take an auto. How did my mother go? She has to either take a bus or take an auto, because there is no black and white taxi available. So in India, there is very poor transportation choices. S similarly, lack of infrastructure, lack of parking, lack of this, made that hyper-local, whether it is transportation, Okay, right. Or standardization of, uh, or food delivery through companies like Swiggy and Zomato, they could flourish. OYO, for example, standardized budget rooms. The only, whenever I used to travel, you are forced to stay in four star or five star because there is no standardized three star, two star available uh, hotels available. OYO did that. Same thing in healthcare. Right? Outside of hospitals, there is no healthcare available. Okay, right. You have to go to a pharmacy to receive medicine, whether it's Portia Medical, which is one of our companies, or Pharmacy, NetMeds, Myra, any of that is huge. Take food, for example, fresh menu, bauxite, grow fit, all of that solve the hyper-local delivery of goods and services problem using data and using logistics. Then, the, today we have payments and fintech leading the show, okay, right? Digital payments, Paytm led the thing. Fintech's explosion has led to a lot of credit growth, be it SME or trade or personal lending, new insurance companies or products, mutual fund investing, robo-advisors. We have seen the explosion. Again, I'm talking about last three years, four years. Look at the velocity here. Look at the momentum that has got created just because of what is happening across in the ecosystem. So we have seen B2C. After B2C, Automatically, B2B and logistics follows. We have seen recently, you read about Odan.com, which is the fastest unicorn. In two years, they have gone to billion dollar valuation. Now the opportunity is there to build B2B companies across sectors. Just like logistics followed the e-commerce boom, Delhi Vary is going, filing for IPO, or just filed for IPO. You have Ecom Express, which is a large part of the Flipkart, Flipkart group. You have highly funded, almost reaching unicorn in terms of valuation status, intercity giants like Rivigo and Black Buck. Intracity within the city, last mile, again, Shadowfax and Bike Ninja. So there is a lot of derivatives of what is happening in the ecosystem that's following. Okay, right? And B2B and logistics, we are very bullish about, uh, which I personally feel will, uh, will be that. So from a real boom, we are all set for the biggest boom now. Growth of internet users going up to 500 million. Data has become affordable, super affordable, one-tenth the price. People have smartphones, feature phones, 
feature phones are, and smartphones are merging in terms of the price point. And uh, to use a cliche, the entire India was addressed. Now it is Bharat. Okay, right? Market has expanded from tier one, thanks to what is happening with Geo, what's up with smartphone prices, with all people colluding to create entire India as an opportunity. Okay, right? So India two, India three, and all of that. And what do they really want? Awareness and aspirations across India is huge. A person in tier two, tier three town, person in a village is exposed to the same media which you and I are seeing. They see the same channels. They watch the same shows. Okay, their aspiration levels are same. They are same. They are aware to the same extent as you and I. But they don't have access. That has been solved by Bluestone, solved by uh, Big Basket, solved by Flipkart, solved by Mintra. All of them. So in the e-commerce, in the retail sector, we are solved to some extent. Okay, right? Same thing they need in healthcare. Do you really think that we can solve the healthcare problem by making doctors go to tier two, tier three compulsory service there? You can't. What is the way to solve? You need a docs app. You need a portia. You need virtual teleconsult. That's the only way to solve. Exactly like the way mobile technology solved the lack of landline access. That's it's the same. This one. Same way. Mobile internet had solved the problem of low PC penetration. I was talking to Amazon. Amazon Prime in India, in India, 70% of the people, 70% of users of Amazon Prime are watching Amazon Prime shows on their mobile, 7-0. It's a phenomenal number. People of my age watch, watch it on TV, but 70% is watching today. And they expect that it will go to 90%. They will watch it on mobile. This is the uh, effect of leapfrogging. Landline not available, mobile will take care. PC is not available, PC is not affordable, mobile internet will give the access to people. Paytm money in financial products. Companies like Aqua Insurance are making insurance affordable in a sachet model. Small micro insurance uh, is available. So what are, what are we looking at? Okay, right? We see content becoming the king. We see there is insatiable need for information and entertainment especially in tier two, tier three cities, old media cannot solve. A standard old media television is the least common denominator meant for the masses, for the most popular. But today people want individualized content. The content you want, content you want, content I want is different. It may be comedy, the genre of comedy is different, the language is different, the format is different, all of that. That will happen because the phone becomes your television. You will consume it on the phone, okay, right? Which means we see a explosion in vernacular video. That's an opportunity waiting to be tapped. The number of people coming on to YouTube, okay, right? 900 million will join. Most of them will join in vernacular. So you're talking really about 22, 23 distinct languages, 22, 23 distinct countries in India where startup entrepreneurs can create value, investors can invest and create value. And because th that is yet to be tapped for all the hype we make about Flipkart exit, about e-commerce valuation, about unicorns. Less than 10% has been scratched. 90% is yet to be done. Okay, right? So vernacular content is big. Okay, right? We already seen companies like Daily Hand, Share Chat, and Clip doing this. Okay, right? And the startup environment today has dramatically improved. Okay, right? There are a lot more sectors open. E-commerce has just shown it is possible to create billion dollar companies. It's possible to invest billions of dollars in India. It's possible to exit billions of dollars in India. It's possible to take out money from India. And people will value companies in India at billions and billions of dollars. Actually value and actually give money. I think that is the biggest opportunity. The past has nothing to do with the future. Future is 10 to 100 times more because of all these events that are happening. The consumer base has expanded from tier 1 to tier 2 and tier 3. Online, online payment, online purchase, trust, nobody questions now. Thanks to Flipkart, thanks to Big Basket, thanks to Amazon, thanks to this, people know that they will get the refund. Okay, right? Exits are happening. People have seen money come out. Okay, right? Flipkart is just the beginning. Okay, right? I think we will see in the next 5 to 10 years, huge amount of wealth being created with all the exits. That will happen. Okay, right? While all this is happening, a lot of you are entrepreneurs here. Okay, right? What can entrepreneurs do? Think big, solve big problems, okay, right? Fortunately, in India, we have 
huge number of problems to solve. Everything is a problem. Infrastructure, road, water, power, whatever you name it is a problem. And I'm not saying in the negative sense. I have lived all my 56 years in India. I've always studied in India. I've worked in India. And I've lived abroad. I'm a proud Indian. I'm very happy. I'm very happy being in India. But the fact that there is a problem is the opportunity for us. I can't go and do this in US or Europe. There, the basic problems have been solved. How do you become an entrepreneur there? I find it very difficult. You have to really be a genius. Okay. Facebook, Twitter, those are all geniuses. You have, to, you have to be a genius to come up, become a successful entrepreneur there. Because all the basic problems have been solved. How many of you have heard of Snap, Snapchat? Raise your hands. Snap or Snapchat, yeah. Snap, it's a Snapchat, okay, right? Now, are you familiar with the model? Yeah. So what do you do there? You take a selfie, okay? And you send a selfie to somebody. And you can put some filters, some gooey, gooey things coming out of your ears, nose, mouth, and all that stuff. And you sell the selfie. And the selfie will disappear in 17 seconds. Okay. There's no money there. Yeah, I'm taking a selfie. I'm putting some filters, sending it to somebody. And that is disappearing. That is valued at $15 billion, $20 billion. Can you imagine? That is sheer genius to come out, think of it. I can't even think of it. First of all, I don't understand. If you look like me or Vikram Gupta, do you want a selfie? OK. No. OK, right? You don't want a selfie. The other part is OK. If you have my selfie, I want it to disappear. I don't want you keeping it. OK, then showing it around, look at this bald man. OK, right? So, so, so Vikram, you are younger. OK, right? <laughs> so, 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 be so you have to be really genius, whereas here you have you have so much of big problems. Whereas in India, you don't have to be genius. You can deliver milk, you can deliver egg, and create a billion dollar company. Last big basket valuation was 960 million. Okay. Nothing sexy, nothing glamorous, very basic. Same thing, I can send a doctor home, I can send a physiotherapist home, create a Portia Medical. So that is a huge opportunity. So how do you build it? Okay, right. Use all the help you can get. Mentors are very important. I like the IVCAP model. Because the kind of people they are able to bring into the table to be advisors, to be mentors, just the access is phenomenal. It's phenomenal, okay, right? And that entrepreneur should suck up all the, all the resources from colleges, from alumni, from ecosystem, okay, right? And choose when you want to sprint, when do you want to run, when do you want to run the marathon. Choose when you want to accelerate, when you want to conserve cash. There will always be problems in each of the companies I have started, scaled, and successfully exited. Every time the company has gone close to running out of ideas, running out of cash, running out of what to do. And many of you will know that I see Ganpati here who was involved in one of the companies as an investor. Okay, right? In, where we go through such a thin line between failure. So up and down, like Mr. Pillai said, is is, is normal. Okay, right? But focus on the big picture while executing every day very hard and attract att attract the right talent that's that really is the okay right and entrepreneurship will spread we are at the best of the times in the bharat opportunity or india to india three opportunities using local entrepreneurs who understand the market it is not about china it is not about us yes you have those models can come here and all that stuff but the local language local landscape local this one is that the way ola solved the way flipkart solved the logistics problem before Amazon came in. It's very local to India. The nuances of India are very different, which Indian entrepreneur understands. Okay, right? Identifying the opportunities and solutions okay, right? is, is something which is very India-specific. Okay, right? And we will see that in the emergence of small towns and cities. Okay, right? And entrepreneurship is something that will be preferred compared to doing a job. Okay, right? And how is, how is really India different? Okay, right? the, I mentioned this. You know, we have. US, Europe, we have evolved countries. We have, China is different. If we focus in India on basics, healthcare, education, solve big pain points, fundamental, fundamental needs of Indian population, look around you. I think we can build great businesses in India, right? unlike other countries where we do this. Where we need to. Summing up, okay. In India, we have had black swan events opening up the India opportunity. What do we call as black swan event? Demonetization without going into right or wrong or how it has been implemented. 
singularly pushed India to accept digital payment by 10 to 15 years it accelerated. Before demonetization, you couldn't have think of Daba owner or a presswala accepting digital payment. It, it, it overnight got forced. It condensed the time frame by 10 to 15 years adoption of digital payment. Internet, mobile has leveled the playing field. We no longer have to be part of industrial houses, large business families to open businesses. I can start it from where I, where I sit. Okay, right? Basic necessities are still to be addressed. E-commerce gives access. Countries abroad, in developed countries, e-commerce is a convenience. Here, in a lot of places, access is not there. Portia, while in metros we provide convenience, in most of the non-metro cities, we provide access to healthcare which they did not have. Okay, right? So I think all of this has made ducks aligned in our favor. The entire ecosystem is conspiring. We have good mentors, we have a lot of venture funds, we have advisors, we have organizations like Thai, which is acting, we have entrepreneurship networks, angel networks, accelerators, incubators. It's almost like the whole world is coming together for us to be able to do it. I think that flywheel momentum has been set in motion. In the last two to three years, got further accelerated by all the black swan events. That is what is it. I want to end with, it's a very famous essay uh, called Acres of Diamonds. Sorry about uh, sorry about the spelling. It's called Acres of Diamonds by Russell Conwell. Basically, it's it's one of the very popular essays that has been copied, repeated, reprinted multiple times. The essential story is it tells story about a guy who left his home, sold his home, went all around the world searching for wealth because he was told that diamonds are available. You can find places where you can extract diamonds and do that stuff. And finally, it was proven that the place where he sold in his own backyard happened to be the, one of the largest mines, diamond mines in Africa. Okay, right? It's called Acres of Diamond. It's, a extreme, it's one of the most, next to Bible, it's the most often reprinted essay. A lot of books have been written about it, but the original one is from Russell Conwell called Acres of Diamond. So I, I feel like Russell Conwell and Acres of Diamond when I look at India and India opportunities, India, India and India opportunities here. Right. So the question is, if not now, when will we build greatest of the businesses, solve basic problems, create jobs, create employment? And if not here in India, where are we going to do it? Are we going to do it in a small country like Singapore or New Zealand? Are we going to do it in a country like China where it's got a lot of government interference? Or are we going to do it in Europe or US where all the basic problems are solved? So what are we what are we what are we waiting for is the is the core question. And I'll end with a story about jungles of Africa. Every day in the morning in jungles of Africa, let's look at what happens. What happens is that in that jungle in the morning, a lion gets up. Okay, right? The only thing the lion knows is that that particular day when it gets up, it has to run faster than the slowest deer in the jungle. Okay, If it runs faster than the slowest deer in the jungle, its job is done. In the same jungle, the same day morning, same place, the deer gets up. What's its only trip in life is it has to run faster than the fastest line. So the moral of the story is, it doesn't matter whether you are a LP, whether you are an investor, whether you are a venture fund, whether you are an entrepreneur, uh, whether you are an employee, when you get up in the morning, you need to be running. Okay, right? So I need to be running now. Thank you very much. Okay, right? And all the best for the event today.